Uh, hi there. Oh well, I'm here uh, on some kind of forgotten place. So this is a monastery where I am. And uh, yeah, there's something offensive about that because I'm here in a monastery and I'm smoking three nuns. So you might say, well, three nuns in a monastery, well, there's nothing strange about it. Well, normally it isn't, but this is a men's monastery, an abbey of the Cistercians. So three nuns, that would be some kind of offensive here in a, in a monastery for men. So, and second thing is, I'm smoking these three nuns uh, in the Sultan pipe, the Sultan pipe. You see that? That's one of my Mershan pipes. Hope you can see that properly. So, but anyway, mm, there's no problem in that because, well, the friars are gone for a long time ago. So several hundred years, but I tell you later. So and the Sultan is gone too. He's dead anyway. Mm. So, but we can learn from that. So that's the way history goes. So the monks, they are gone. The friars are gone. The Sultan is gone. Uh, what just is left is the memory of it and some remains. So remains and memories, the, these are the things they, they are left behind. So, and we, we, can, we can lucky, we can be glad if it, we can tell the same thing about us. So if memories or, uh, yeah, if something remains, uh, so uh, that's the way history goes. So, and the tobacco, three nuns, I want to talk about, well, there's something similar to it. So I tell you why. Mm, I already showed you the tin, so three nuns. Three nuns is a traditional tobacco. I think this is, this is more than 100 years tradition in this tin. But it is really 100 years of tradition in this tin. Well, this is difficult to say because this tobacco um, changed a lot over the decades. So it is a Bell's three nuns, they say, but today it is not. It is uh, done by McBaron today. And it was done by Orlick tobacco before that. And before that, it was done by British American tobacco. So, there are different producers, but not only different producers, the tobacco changed completely. So, it was a Perique tobacco, so with a huge amount of Perique. And it was a legend then, so I think it's still a legend today. So, and perhaps this has also to do with the price. So this tobacco is, I think everywhere in the world, it's a pricey tobacco. So this one is in Germany, 16 euros, 30 cent. So that's a lot per 50 gram, 16 euros, 30 cent. So, and today it is a tobacco done of dark Virginia and Kentucky. So it is a Kentucky tobacco, I think, because the moment you light it up, you, you feel the Kentucky, you taste the Kentucky, the spiciness of the Kentucky, a little bit of pepper notes. It is not so sweet uh, than many other tobaccos uh, done by McBerry. So let's say the Dark Twist. For me, I think the Dark Twist is some kind of sweeter. So, but that may be just for me. Um, yeah, but before that, it was a Perique tobacco, and that's something very different, totally different. 
So, you know, you might think about it if this just what remains is the name and the legend, of course, and the price. So I heard before it was it was in in every time by done by every producer. I think it was a pricey tobacco. So yeah. Anyway, I'll show you the tobacco. Mm. So, and don't get me wrong, it is a really nice tobacco. It is really a good tobacco. Smokes very well. So, you see, mm, these are curlies. And they even changed uh, the way the curlies look. So, the Orlick tobacco, uh, the three nuns done by Orlick, that was a brighter tobacco with brighter uh, roll flags. So, and you see, this is, I don't think, yeah, look at that. So, I don't know if that's really properly done because uh, I didn't rub anything here. Yeah? Um, it came like that. So, it's, it's already a little bit of rub. So you you might like that or not. So and the curlies they even changed their size from British American tobacco to Orlick and from Orlick to McBarrett. So what is left? It's left uh, that it is uh, a natural tobacco, that it is a curly tobacco. Uh, the name is left, uh, but not even the tin. So before that, uh, so that was a different tin. So many of you might uh, still remember the old tin. Uh, that was a nice one. So I don't know. That's but things change, and today, yeah, the industrial process, I think, has to go on, and then they they take all the same tins, and uh, yeah. Well. But obviously, it doesn't make things uh, really cheaper, <laughs> in this case, uh, at least. Mm. But, as I said, don't get me wrong, it is a great tobacco, it's a really nice tobacco. If it is so nice that you spend for it 16 euros, 30 cent, well, that's a decision you have to make on your own, so can't say anything about that. For me, I think there are alternatives. So maybe uh, the Dunhill, maybe Rhodes, um, or the Golden Slices, I don't know. There are, there are some alternatives, I think. So, anyway, mm, I think I'm going to tell you something about the place uh, I'm here. This is an old monastery, uh, as I said. Uh, it goes back to the 13th century. Uh, first third of the 13th century it was built. And it's a Cistercensian uh, monastery. Cistercian. Uh, I don't know if the pronunciation is right, but I think so. So, and the friars here, um, yeah, they lived from agriculture, they did pottery, uh, a brickyard. They had a really fine brickyard. And uh, yeah, that's, that's what they did for a living. And. Mm, but I think after some decades, and then more and more after centuries, there was a big struggle be between Bremen and Münster. So there were two bishops fighting about uh, leadership in this monastery. So, and then the monastery uh, went south, if you could say so. So, uh, and then in the end, um, they even shoot with cannons inside the monastery just to destroy some walls and the church and so on so that the friars had to leave. And then with the Protestant Reformation uh, there was no uh, there was no sense in building it, it new, so because northern Germany um, uh, was very Protestant, uh, so 
driven by Protestant Reformation, uh, especially Bremen and some other uh, cities of influence. So, so anyway, I think uh, I show you around. Might be of some interest. So this place, by the way, is I think just 40 kilometers uh, from Bremen. So it's quite near. I show you around. Let me just take the camera. So, well, you see, uh, these friars, uh, they knew a lot about uh, brick making. So they had special sizes and uh, special techniques uh, to, you know, to do all the bricks uh, very well and just to, to build some buildings uh, for a long time. So these buildings, uh, they last quite a while. So remember, this is uh, about 800 years old. So, and today, uh, the whole ground here is private property. So it is property of a noble family. And, well, normally filming is not allowed here. So what, but, but <laughs> don't be afraid. I asked them and did a very, very small donation uh, just, yeah, just to, for the, there's a club here, friends of the, of the ruins here and uh, they take care of everything and yeah, it's good that someone takes care here and so if that is possible by a little donation I'll be happy about that so but the reason why it's not allowed well I found that some kind of funny that is that they got a lot of trouble here with uh, drones so people coming here and uh, flying with drones uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we live in strange times so before that it was not forbidden but then they said no well we can't do that anymore so yeah that's our little tour hmm Anyway, it is a nice mall. It is a nice mall. So this is it, with three nuns in a monastery, and I hope you are well. Um, take care, and perhaps see you again. <laughs>